Good morning, welcome back. Guess what? We're fishing again. So today uh, I've come to another one of my club lakes on the Chelmsford ticket uh, and a lake that I don't fish very often. Uh, in fact, in the last five to six years, I can count on one hand the amount of times I've fished this lake and I don't really know why, to be honest. It is stunning. Just have a look at this. Big open pit. Now, Fairly featureless, to be honest. Not much going on at all. But underneath is like an egg box, like an egg crate, full of contours, gullies, shelves, gravel patches. You name it, it's going on underneath. Leading about is quite fun. Now, unfortunately, on the club lake, the rules are you're not allowed to use. Uh, a deeper or anything like that, or bait boats. Uh, so I haven't been able to use the deeper on this to get a real understanding of what it is, but pure old fashioned leading around. So I currently, uh, obviously fishing the two rods, uh, I've just got one flicked out over here because the wind's pushing into me at the minute, I'm in the face of it, so, and they are showing quite close in. So I've got one probably about here, a little Parker Bates wafter as per. Uh, and then at the moment I've got a PVA bag with a um, Parker Bates wafter on it, but uh, nine wraps out, so about here. I'm just testing that for a minute because there's a shelf that comes up. Here's deep, and then it comes up. But I am pre-baiting this little area down here because I did just see a fish show just in this corner here. So I have flicked a bit of bait out. Now I've run out of boilies and I didn't have enough time to get another order in. So I'm just having to use some pellet, glugged up pellet. I've just made some balls of that. And I've just put that down just here. So yeah, we'll see what happens. The weather is good for it. As I say, the wind is pushing into my face here, into this little bay. And then it goes around the corner here. But yeah, beautiful. Just come out of a really warm spell. It's just starting to cool off. We had a bit of a storm last night. So fingers crossed, I can get a few on that mat for you. We'll see how we get on. All right, catch up with you in a bit. <laughs> Now these sort of tutorials have been done to death, but I'll just show you how I do uh, my PVA bags. So, Parker Bates OG Fish Wafter on the needle, ready to go. And then here's the rig without the lead for a minute. That's the Gemini uh, stems. And then uh, braid, naked braid, soft braid, slip D, size six, curve shank hook. And then the lead, and I get my leads for from Paul at MP Lead Shed. And they are superb, and they fit on there perfectly. 
and that attaches to the main line loop to loop. <coughs> Get my bait and floss. today. Through there. Trim off those tags. Windproof lighter if I don't drop it on the floor. Which is definitely needed today. ready to go in the bag and I use either the quarter ones or the ESP bags the perforated ones tend to work well this time of year here's one I made earlier Ooh. and then we've got Parker Bates mini pellet mini mix a couple of spoonfuls into the bag first these are the 60 by 120 bags by the way, not the smallest, sort of mid-size. And then I just fold the hook bait over the lead like that. Pop the lead in. Like that, so it's in the middle of the bag. And then leave that hanging out just for a minute. bit more mini mix so it's about three quarters full get the hook bait and then just using my little finger I just ease that in over the top you just got to be careful that you don't catch the braid around the hook or anything make sure that's all free and then a bit more mini mix like that and then tap it all down make it nice and tight and then twist and then hold that there PVA tape and then tie it around but work your way down the bag <coughs> making it as nice as tight as you can Break that off. Overhand knot. Let's do it where you can see it. Another overhand knot. any loose bits I always take this off the top as well just tie it up a little bit but be careful that you don't cut the <laughs> done that before cut the end of the boom off there we go now we need to do the corners now these ESP ones come with a little flap at the bottom which is a little bit annoying but not the end of the world so just a little lick along the flap, stick that down, no more flap, push the corners in, a little lick now you can go either that way or that way, some say that if you're casting distance that way is better because it's more aerodynamic, I'm not casting a huge amount of distance today so we're just going to go that way. Push that corner in, a little lick, and a stick, and then that is a 
this super tight PVA bag with the hook bait right at the top. So think of it like a method feeder type affair, I suppose. Weight at the bottom, hook bait neatly on the top. And that is ready to cast. Now you could add a bit of liquid. Uh, I'm not adding any liquid today, but you could add Parker Bait's flat spot. Just uh, create a little hole there and inject some in or pour some into the bag before you tie it up. But yeah, let's get it in the lake. So a little update, uh, as you can see, based on my attire and the fact that the buoy's gone up, or probably, uh, the weather's taken a turn. Was forecast to be fair, so it wasn't unexpected, but I thought I might have just got away with it. But um, PVA bag stood on the right hand rod, left hand rod I've moved now to, I mean only six wraps out but I've put a bit of bait over the top of it, but um, no boilies, as I said, so having to, uh, having to use a mixture of pellet, some OG fish pellet, some other pellet that I had, um, with some, uh, some liquid over the top of it, just sort of bind it together a little bit. So I just spotted six or seven spots of that over the top of the left hand rod, and that's the little wafter. So yeah, uh, a few beeps. Uh, so there is life there. They are showing all over the lake, right in front of me actually. Almost a bit like they're sticking two fingers up at me at the moment. So yeah, we are fishless so far. 25 past 12. Plenty of time for a bite. So yeah, it looks like the rain has eased up now. Starting to brighten and starting to brighten up a bit now. Which is good, because I hate packing away with wet gear. So hopefully we might be in for a brighter afternoon. Fingers crossed. So, still fishless I'm afraid. Uh, time is quarter two. And I was just about to film this and say that nothing else has come out on the lake at all since I've been here. And not 30 seconds before I picked up the camera. Guy to my right, two swims down. He's into one now. So they are on the munch. But I do remember now why this lake... I do remember now why this lake can be a bit tricky. So this lake can be quite tricky, which is probably why I give it a bit of a swerve most of the time, so I haven't got a huge amount of time to get out fishing. Generally just, just days with the occasional night every so often. If I can uh, get away with it at home. And this lake can be tricky, uh, can be quite rewarding. I know there's a 35 pound in here, common I think. Biggest I've ever had out of here is 18. Uh, that was last year. So yeah, they are showing all over the lake, in front of me, to my right, to my left. So they're definitely there, and they're definitely moving around. So I've moved uh, my left hand rod across just a little bit more, because I just saw a few more shows. I'm just trying to basically put, put the rig where I see them, but as I mentioned before, the bottom of this lake is very inconsistent. Uh, it's very up and down. So you need to have a lead around first to make sure that you're not hitting into a crater, which with the temperature still being around 20 degrees, 22 degrees, you know, I don't think the fish will feed that deep uh, this time of year. Even though it is starting to cool off now, we are mid-September, albeit a very warm mid-September. So, yeah we will carry on, oh, both on PVA bags now. I, you know, when things are a little bit tough on a session like this, I do tend to revert to the old PVA bag just because I've got so much faith in it. 
you know that wherever it's placed, the rig's presented, little pile of attraction, can't really go wrong. And I know that PVA bags work well on this lake. So I'm switching it up a little bit. Uh, Magic Beans, wafters. So I've got a pink one on one, uh, and I've still got the uh, match the hatch on the other one. Uh, show you where they are is just over here there's nobody fishing in the swim next to me but if somebody does come in i will have to move that probably but it's just probably about here just because i saw some fish crashing around here and it's not too deep here it's not too deep quite shallow and then it drops off here and comes back up again and then drops uh, and then this one is in the same place actually which is about nine wraps out to about there so a couple of guys just turned up opposite me over there they're just setting up now looks like they're here for the night so yeah the guy that's into one is just down behind that bush other side of that bush and i think whatever he's using must be oily because you can see there's a bit of a flat spot just there I'm not sure whether that's whether that's where he's hooked it from. So yeah, we continue. Got about an hour and a half-ish left, maybe two hours at a push. But I don't want to be too late tonight. We've got a lot going on at the minute at home. You know the drill. And there we go, all packed up. A little bit earlier than scheduled because the weather decided to turn again and I could just see this big black cloud heading towards me. Um, it's 20 past three, normally I'd stay till five-ish, half five, but nothing was happening. As I said before, the guy to my right, he, uh, he hooked into one, but I couldn't see him, so I don't know whether he landed that or not. Let's just assume he did. Um, but other than that, I didn't see anything else caught on the lake at all the time I was there. So, look, it happens, doesn't it? That's why it's called fishing, not catching, as they say. Um, so it's good to be out. Good to try this lake another time. Uh, I will come back. I'm going to go perhaps the other side, even though the wind was towards me. I was in the face of the wind today, which I thought was going to work in my favour. But um, lots of line bites, potentially, but then it could have just been the wind. I did have the rod tips just dipped under the surface to try and eliminate that but um i don't you know if there's a bit of an undertow it's going to happen isn't it but you know it is what it is onwards and upwards um so nothing to report today uh hopefully going out again next week i'll bring you guys with me um so yeah until then i'll see you in the next one